the mod function is a very, very simple function. You click mod, you know, this description over here tells you or reminds you or corrects you that, you know, this is what I'm going to do. So you take any number divided by any number and the mod tells you what the remainder is. As in when you take, let's say 10 and divide it by three, it tells you that the remainder is one. 3 multiplied 3, 9 plus 1 equal to 10. So 1 is the leftover after you divide 10 by 3. Uh, that is, if you divide 10 by 5, there is no remainder and you get a 0. If you divide 10 by a larger number, let's say 15, you get a remainder of 10. So 10 divided by 15 leaves a remainder of 10 because 15 multiplied 0 plus 10 equal to 10. So that's what the mod function does. Uh, now, if you just know the mod functions, it doesn't sound like much. And especially in case of financial situations, it it does appear that, you know, I don't know what can I do with this, okay? Or probably a useless thing for making financial models or stuff like that. I, however, believe, of course, you know, the same thing can be achieved with a lot of things. But I don't know, it intuitively comes to me that I will use the mod function to do, let's say I'll give you an example. Let's say I have a list of months in terms of like this. Okay? So think of it like month one, month two, and so on. And then I have to, something happens in quarter three every time. Let's say I have to pay taxes in quarter three every time. And so now I want in my model to identify, is this month the tax paying month or no? And same thing and so on. So I can use the mod function to say that, you know, the month number divided by three, uh, what result does it produce? So you will see that every third quarter it produces a zero. So probably you can now write a formula that if mod the month number comma three equals to zero, that means it's a quarter end. You know, you can say tax time. Of course, you know, you will probably use something else when you're building a model. Uh, so it will say that every third quarter is a tax time. Tax time. Well, if let's say it was six, we can make this dynamic. Let's say there was an input that you pay taxes every six months. You can now link the divisor to this input. And so now every sixth month is a tax time or every 12 month is a tax time, every 10th month is a tax time. So, so yeah, you can use mod function in your modeling to identify anything that occurs in cycles. So, uh, something like this, that every 10th month is a tax time. Or let's say you want to write a function that, you know, this is which month of the year. So you would want 13 to say one, 14 to say two, like the 12 month of the year. So you will want this to be January to December. And then let's say again, January to December and so on. And if you want to achieve this with a formula, you can again use mod which is this divided by 12. Uh, this will give a funny result. I'll show you that in the month 12, it produces zero, which means 12, the remainder of 12 divided by 12 is zero, which is absolutely correct. So I'll probably adjust it like this. Let me see if this works. So you see, I added a negative one in the mod and positive one outside the mod. So now it can produce results like this, that this is the months of uh, January to December and so on and so on. So, so yeah, you can use the mod functions to achieve a lot of different things, even though it just simply means remainder. I would say probably half of my models would have a mod somewhere, probably. Okay, so this case, you know, uh, like once I looked at this, 
I could immediately, uh, you know, say that I can solve this using a mod, like this specific part of the problem that there is a string or there is a range of these 19 symbols. And then there is a certain amount of, let's say, addition to this list or movement on this list. And then this list repeat itself, like this is a ring on a, on a slot machine. So the same symbols keep appearing every time the list rotates. So if let's say this, this is a list of 19 symbols. So let's say you, you have rotated this 20 times or like 20 steps. So it will come back to, let's say this one. So if you start over here, you go three steps, you come over here. But then if you go 19 plus three steps, you will still be here. Or you go 19,000 plus three steps, you will still end up here. So in the case, you know, we had a certain number of steps that you would go. And then it asks that, you know, where will you end up? So this is where the reel is set up or starting right now. But it says that, you know, you go 35 steps. I think it is 35. Yeah. So you go 35 steps and where will you come back? And so 35, you need to take out as many 19s out of that as possible. And then what you are left with is this. And that is where you will end up. So if you start at 35 and you can use mod to figure it out, that you use mod, say minus one plus one, like I did on the dates. Uh, and then 19 to say 16. So you will end up at the 16th symbol which is this ice cream thing. And uh, so yeah, you can use the mod function to go through the ring because the ring repeats itself after every 19 symbols. So if you go 19 steps from any point, uh, you will end up at the same point, okay? Uh, but if you use mod, sorry, equal to mod, 19 comma 19 you get a zero okay sorry something like this 19 comma 19 you get a zero instead i wanted to get uh 19 let's say okay so i write a minus one and plus one to instead of zero i'll get 19 but then show you so for all the different values If I were to do this, so if I then do the minus one and plus one, it will give me zero for 19. And instead I wanted a 19 for 19. So I do a minus one and plus one. And then for 19, it gives me 19. For 20, it gives me one. For 21, it gives me two. This is like a easier formula to use for the next step to identify where it will land uh, rather than you know using a if this equal to zero then 19 otherwise use the mod so yeah that